Good evening. I'm Kim Kelling, Director of Content and Community Partnerships here at WFSU. Tonight, we continue our American Graduate What's Next series as we take a look at soft skills. What are soft skills? Business leaders say they are critical and often lacking. Educators say we have to teach students these critical skills. We have a great panel here to address the issue of soft skills. Joining us starting at the far end is Kyle Rourke, Senior Assistant Director at FSU Career Center, Emily Kennelly, Senior Assistant Director at the FSU Career Center, Blake Dowling, CEO, Aegis Business Technologies, Priya Haraga, HR Director at the Tallahassee Primary Care Associates, Maria Mead, President, Kaiser University, Tallahassee Campus, Madeline Pumariega, Executive Vice President and Provost at Tallahassee Community College, and Byron Green, Interim Director, Office of Undergraduate Research at FAMU. Thank you all for being here today. But we also want you, our audience, to um, ask your questions. So you can go online to ask questions of our panel tonight during this live broadcast. You can send the questions through Facebook at WFSU Media and by email to amgrad at wfsu.org. That's A-M-G-R-A-D at WF, wfsu.org. So we're going to start tonight off uh, with a short little video that some of my colleagues at Mississippi Public Television that are also part of the American Graduate Project that they did to sort of illustrate for students, and these are high school students, what are soft skills. So we're going to take a look at this video, and then I'd love to have your feedback on what you all perceive as soft skills. So if we can roll this video, we'll take a look at that. So, uh, you here for the position too? Yes, I am. I hate to tell you, but I know I'm gonna get the job simply because of my outfit, but you don't know the hell I mean. Come on, that dress is mad short and it's super tight. So unprofessional. Hey, you're the least to talk with those ripped jeans. I'm just ready to get this over with. Whatever. Send in the next two, please. both here today. I noticed that I, I don't have either of your resumes. A resume? Oh. What's a resume? <gasps> Isn't the application the resume? It appears you both are a little unprepared for today. And did you know that you're inappropriately dressed for a job interview? Hi, I'm Aaliyah Spear. Hello, I'm Jacob Swansea. Remember, your attire and appearance should always reflect professionalism in the workplace. Professional dress code is not only important for a job interview, but for all work environments. Some jobs require a specific dress code, so don't be afraid to ask your job for the required attire. For more information, visit gettingtowork.mpbonline.org. So it really can be as simple as that to try to help students understand what we're talking about when we're saying you need to be professional when you go in for that first job interview. And, and Blake and Priya, you are representing our business people here. So I'd love to get your sense of, I'll start with you, Blake. What do you look for? What do you want young people who apply at Aegis, what, what skills do you want them to have? A real world example from a couple of weeks ago, uh, a young lady from one of our vendors uh, asked if we were hiring and I said uh, we would consider, you know, the idea of an assistant position or an internship and I went a little non-traditional with the interview process and I said why don't you meet me Wednesday morning at 730 at Goodwood, there's a chamber event and uh, I'm going to be talking to first time chamber conference attendees about their experience, networking, and what I was thinking was, I want to see if they're punctual, see what their dress code's like, and see how they carry themselves in a crowd. 
And uh, I walked in, she was standing there and I introduced her to Dana and Sue from the chamber. And they said, we've already met Adrian. And uh, she was dressed professionally and punctual. And then we went about the formal interview process with uh, two of our management team members and we hired her. So dress code, professionalism, punctuality. <laughs> Yep. Those things are huge in my book. Okay. How about you, Priya? What do you, what, I know you're HR, so you're seeing a lot of this. We are, uh, besides becoming prepared to the interview, which is really important, knowing what we do, why we do what we do, obviously we have positions that you have to have certain skills and licenses for. But besides that, we want someone who's going to demonstrate compassion, someone who's going to communicate clearly and effectively because we're dealing with patients and we want to make sure that patients understand their take home instructions. So we need to make sure someone's definitely able to communicate. Someone who can work together as in a team is very important. So giving us examples about teamwork, uh, patient care not only involves the doctor, it involves the front end and the back end. So we're definitely looking for someone who can demonstrate, and it doesn't have to be in a healthcare setting, just demonstrate that you've shown teamwork, that you can be a leader, and that you can definitely communicate clearly and concisely. Great. Well, that, now I want to talk to some of our people on the education side. Byron, what do you, when you think of soft skills and when you're talking to your students at FAMU, what, are you, what do you talk to them about? Well, I think it falls in line with what has already been said, but I think of the soft skills as the intangibles. Um, organizations always are looking for people to have, you know, functional proficiency, but how do they work in a team environment, in an office environment? How do they engage with customers or potential customers? Um, you know, it's those things that, that, that make a difference, um, that make for a great workplace environment, but also can also impact their career trajectory if they're able to demonstrate these capabilities. And it, do you, Kyle and Emily, do you see that at FSU when you're talking to students to like get them prepared for those interviews? Good. Absolutely, and I think that um, communication and just interpersonal skills are very important and things that we prepare our students for at the FSU Career Center. Um, and face-to-face -face communication too. I think a lot of our students that we see um, use technology, which is uh, positive in the workforce, but can also lead to a lack of face-to-face -face communication or picking up the phone, um, sending professional emails, and those are things that um, I think we have mm -hmm. talked with students about. Yeah. Yeah, I think having a consistent um, you know, persona that you're putting out. So if you're coming to an interview with a certain resume, a certain cover letter, and it's saying certain things about you, and they go check your social media account and they see a totally different person, um, just consistently professional in every interaction with employers, with colleagues, um, with faculty, that kind of thing. And Maria, you were talking a little bit at Kaiser. You actually have the students on campus modeling by the way they have to dress and how they interact. So talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Um, correct. We're a career university. So we're trying to prepare our students for the career the minute they start school. We have a dress code at the campus. Men wear ties and shirts and slacks to go to school. Ladies wear dresses and slacks and skirts. There's no jeans allowed. So we are preparing them. There are strict attendance policies. We want to make sure they're on time. Um, we want to make sure that they're doing collaborative work in the classroom. All of our students take speech classes, so they're prepared to do presentations. We want to make sure that we integrate the soft skills within the curriculum so that every day they're coming back home with some additional soft skills to arm themselves when they go out there and get that job. That's great. And, and Madeline, with, with what you're doing, talk a little bit about, you've kind of come up with this term, I don't know if you did, but I love the term employability skills, and you've been doing a lot of work around the state on this. So will you talk a bit about what you're looking for in that? Sure. Um, so the Florida Chamber put out a goal for 2030 that 80% of Floridians would um, have the employability skills required um, to really keep a job, stay in a job, you know, look for that job, along with 60% of Floridians having the right credential, whether it's a certificate or an associate's, a 
baccalaureate and beyond. And so we developed a framework, um, whether it's soft skills, employability skills, I really like to call them future-proof skills. So if we think about what our education institutions are doing today, including at TCC, we're training a workforce for jobs that don't exist. So how do we balance both teaching the applied knowledge, what's required for that licensure, and the technical skills for the job, but at the same time, those skills that are foundational to a workplace and to effective relationships, whether it's reliability, you know, as Blake mentioned, being on time, communication skills, teamwork, um, entrepreneurship mindset, a design mindset, can you think critically, can you problem solve? And so um, that's the balance that I think um, all of our higher education institutions and training programs really uh, require because the future will, require, will, will certainly need these skill sets for you to stay in a job that uh, transcends one job into another one. I think for the, the next decade, we'll see technology have a net loss in jobs and AI really automate things in a way that we haven't seen in the last decade. So can we take an incumbent worker and who's learned these future proof skills, add a layer of technical skills and they stay employed and they gain that employment, um, meaningful employment in the workplace. So hearing that, is that something that you're all wrestling with and do you have any thoughts about that? Anyone want to comment on that? Yeah, so the, the language that we use is career ready um, and sort of the career ready readiness competencies in that um, you can see a, a, a switch in the survey of employers from let's say 10, 15 years ago saying it was really the hard skills that they were looking for for students coming out and there was a lack of hard skills um, for students coming out and now it's flipped and now it's those soft skills. And so just having um, a degree, just having certain hard skills is not enough anymore um, often to land those top positions. You also have to be somebody who's personable, um, can interact and get along with others, can collaborate, um, have those other soft skills as well. Definitely. And I, I've heard people say, you know, I can teach that part, but yes. I, like I, I can teach them the job that I need them to do, but I need them to be well-rounded people right. that are, especially if they're going to interact with patients that can handle that or clients. Um, so how, when you're looking for that perfect employee, what are what are the some of the things that you know that make you feel like okay, we've got the right person here? Well, I think to tie in what a, a couple of comments, a disruption is a constant in the marketplace, and how do you prepare your organization? to deal with that disruption. And what we did a couple of years ago, um, our technology team members were called technology service representatives. And to me, that needed to be changed. So we changed it to technology consultants because we're no longer just fixing something. We're guiding and we're providing a path for the technology to work for various entities and various in industries. Um, so it's fascinating and it's a never ending uh, process. But what's cool, um, I take HR very seriously. I like to take point on the hiring. And uh, when you hold someone's resume in your hand, you know, from my perspective, that's someone's life, that's someone's career. I shut the door, I put the do not disturb button on my phone, and I get laser focused. Uh, because these are gonna be the people that take care of our clients, that take care of each other. And we're a family at our business. So we obviously, we have to have the skills, like you said, but you have to have that it factor. That's what I always call it. And there's certainly fancier terms to describe it, but we have people with backgrounds in nursing, construction, um, government, that we have made them proficient IT people, but you have to have that it factor, because not just disruption, but communication. If you look at like, I have strong communication skills. Okay, does that mean you answer all e emails, all texts, all phone calls? Uh, it's, it, the game has certainly changed uh, since I've been in the market. I. I think that one of the things in reading your report in the uh, Florida 2030 uh, employability um, skills framework is this concept of, of really helping develop critical thinking skills. And I know at all of our universities and colleges, that's something that we want to do. How do we do that? How, how do we teach critical thinking skills? Well, I, I'll take a stab at it. Um, at <laughs> Florida a and we, we have... Uh, uh, initiated a office of undergraduate research and it is not just in STEM but it's STEM and non-STEM. We have a cohort of students uh, ranging from physics to theater 
and and but the idea behind that is not so much as the work that they're doing and the outcomes of their research, um, but it is really about developing those students to have higher and sharper critical thinking skills, understanding problems from a larger scale, um, being able to then communicate that um, to people who are not in their area. So this summer, for instance, we, we had a cohort of students engaged in eight, week, eight weeks of research. Um, at the end, we had them give presentations, but it didn't require them to talk about their research in terms of their outcomes, but it required them to talk to the audience as if they were you know, middle schoolers. And so how do you learn to communicate your research? It can be the best research out there, proof, you know, everything is there, but if you can't communicate it to the general public, then sometimes it's not, not much good to you. And Madeline, with, with certification programs, and maybe you're not doing deep research, but you still want to embed critical thinking skills in any, any job, really. So how do we do that in, in our, you know, less sort of high, uh, you know, sort of research-based programs, but like in, you're taking a, a, a health certification or you're taking culinary or something like that. How do we bring that into that mindset as well? So I think you, you, you mentioned the word embed, it's integrate this idea that they're going to sit out here and you're gaining them in some other form is is really not happening i think everything is integrated and so whether you're in a culinary um, certificate program that might be very quick you're doing teamwork collaboration communication your email your your faculty member sending you an email um, your colleagues your students your friends are sending you a text and so all of it gets integrated in terms of projects that require uh, teamwork among students. Sometimes students will say, I'm in this project with four students and I'm doing all the work. And I said, and you're gonna be in a work environment one day and you're gonna be doing all the work. Uh, I and might have so... some people in the back there um, <laughs> nodding their heads right now. But you start to teach them about, okay, don't come and see me about it. Talk to your colleagues. How are you gonna make sure? Can you readjust the deadlines? And so something just as simple as that. And I also think many of our students are coming to us now as digital natives. So this idea of memorization plays a whole different game when you have your phone and you can Google it. So how can you apply what you've just learned? How can you trust the research you're looking at? And so I was just with our English and communications faculty yesterday, and they were having really a deep dialogue and conversation how just essay writing has shifted from an English composition one um, you know, to English composition two, really being about what students need to be successful, which is actually look at a piece of information and, and data and think critically about it and then express themselves, mm -hmm. whether it's in the written word or the spoken word. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add to that what you're doing at Kaiser, Maria? I would agree. Well, our culinary degree is a two-year degree, but, but what Madeline says about the fact that the students are collaborating, they're working on projects t together, they're doing presentations. Our students might be cooking and then presenting their food and sh telling how did they cook it, how did they work together, together to come up with the end result. And so the collaboration and the integration of all those pieces is helping to provide them with those skills. And you see that in all the classrooms as well. And Priya, I would assume that if you, it's critical, literally critical, that people who work at, at Tallahassee Primary Care Associates have critical thinking skills? It's one of my favorite questions to ask uh, <laughs> during an interview. Uh, we do a lot of behavioral based interviewing. And so, um, you know, and we, we tell them, you know, tell us about a time when you had a difficult experience with a coworker. We want to see how they work through that experience. Did they actually handle it or do they go run to their boss and go, boss, I'm, I'm having a problem with Sue, you need to take care of it. And so if they're doing that, we don't we can't hire them here. You know, that, that, that's something that you gotta do in a split second. And so it's one of my favorite questions to ask. So for those out there okay, that are trying to interview. You're <laughs> it's Be definitely prepared. one of my favorite, yes. And, and then how do you deal with, you know, a temperamental patient? You know, are you, are you gonna be able to handle that face-to-face -face in the room with a patient or are, are you gonna stop everything and run and get your physician or office manager? So it's two of my favorite questions that I would ask. Very good, mm -hmm. I'm glad we got one of them. That's good. <laughs> Anybody else have thoughts on it? Like, what do you do at, at FSU? I mean, obviously you're, and 
are you working with students from day one as they come into FSU or are you just like, oh, senior fall, like spring semester, they finally show up at career? Before day one, we'll see them at orientation. Um, we'll see them as they're visiting. Um, but then definitely um, first day, first week on campus, um, we have resources that can help them um, become career ready. Mm -hmm. Even if they haven't chosen a major yet, um, you know, help them think through what they might wanna do, what their skills are, what their interests are. Um, all the way up to somebody who's going to graduate school, getting ready to finish a graduate degree. Mm -hmm. um, we can provide some help. Yeah. That's and all of those, I'll add, are um, critical kind of decisions that you're making about your career, whether you're choosing your major or choosing to go on to graduate school. And so we really teach our students how to make effective career decisions, which essentially they are developing critical thinking skills through making those career decisions. And that's something that we teach them from day one. I do want to say that there's a role in employers play because I think that the acquisition of these skills are best um, acquired in a work environment and the role of internships and pre-apprentice programs and work-based learning really plays an important role and I think we see that students who've had an internship during their academic time um, have earnings you know certainly make more than a student who didn't have an internship and for that um, employer they get an opportunity to teach them the culture of their organization while they're there interning and it's almost like they get to date them for a bit you know and make sure they're the right fit you call it it and so many organizations are looking for fit Right. And how you know that is when you've had a student um, with you for 16 weeks for a semester, you really get a deeper dive in how they handle um, conflict, how they handle communications, how they represent your company, and how they uh, represent themselves uh, as well. That, that really um, reminds me of our team uh, at Aegis. Our COO um, was hired. I met him at a workforce um, event here in town and um, just had that it factor. And uh, he was an analyst with another technology company in town, had gone to Alabama, worked, did an internship at Walmart, and uh, we were hiring for a sales position. But I didn't think he was the right fit for that job necessarily, but I was like, we're gonna find something for you. And 10 years later, he's our chief operating officer. But having that time to grow within the organization, our entire management team in place now are veteran employees that were promoted from within people that have grown from internships to key positions. Um, it's, it's huge, excellent point. I also wanted to say, um, to piggyback off of um, the idea of internships and the critical role that they do play. Um, we've had students to go to national laboratories uh, to engage in research during the summer. And it's an intimidating process when you're going up to the, one of the national laboratories. But students come back and they're like brand new people. I've got full of confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the great things that I, I believe some of our partners at the National Labs do is that they meet the students where they are. They don't say you have to be here. We're gonna come down here and build you up. And when they come back to campus in the fall, they're probably um, you know, really uh, ready to engage in deeper uh, thought. Um, they're better thinkers, they're better learners, their grade point averages tend to rise and then they are also prepared, but it's a great training ground for them to learn even the soft skills as well. Well, you know what you're saying and what you've all been saying, it, it also, to me, it's relevance. It, it helps that student develop the sense of relevance of, of what they're studying and where it's gonna be applicable in the real world, which is ultimately the goal. And we all want better graduation rates, so if these students have a better sense of what they're learning and how it can be applied in a job, what they need to know for a job, I would think that's the hook then that gets them mm -hmm. to the finish line. Exactly. So, exactly. And those are such great skills because in the uh, world of academia, when the education stops and the job starts, the learning times 10 starts happening. Um, Keith from our team just got his Microsoft 365 certification. Um, we're looking at various cybersecurity certifications, rolling out new products constantly, and again, keeping up with the disruption so that we don't have an artificially intelligent CEO doing my job in, uh, <laughs> in three years. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's such a fun part of the job and so rewarding, and I take a lot of pride in being able to push people forward to achieve their goals in their career and doing it under 
uh, the umbrella of a business in Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. It's really, it's really fabulous when we have students that come in from Florida State um, and they get to do their externship with us and then they come and do a gap year with us and then they go to PA school or med school and they come back through and I went, oh my goodness, <laughs> you were here five years ago as an MA and now you're gonna be a doctor in a year. This is amazing. And so to be able to be a business in Tallahassee to provide externships and internships, whether it's Florida State and Ki we've had Kaiser students and we've had TCC students and we've had a lot of students come through. Our doors are open and we want to be able to give them a real world experience and hopefully that will make learning better and their understanding of what it takes to succeed outside of school a greater experience. Well, most of the people on the cameras here are FSU students or recent graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, we have FAMU interns up in the newsroom, so we are firm believers in uh, giving people experiences here at WFSU. It's how we survive and uh, build the talent pipeline that we need. Uh, I want to turn to FSU Career Center because you guys just launched or about to launch a really interesting online module or several modules to really help students learn those skill sets beyond the academia piece. So. Um, we have, why, why don't you tell, walk us through what, what it is and, and what it looks like. Before I get to that, I do want to kind of piggyback on the, um, the experiential learning sort of emphasis here in the sense that um, in the past several years, we do a, a graduation survey each year. And we have about 70% of students say they participated in some sort of experiential learning opportunity, which is good, but nowhere, I mean, it should be at 100%. And so um, we're also excited that starting in June, the freshmen coming in, in the fall now have to complete um, to graduate some sort of experiential learning requirement or some sort of experiential learning opportunity. Um, taking those skills they'll learn, outside, they'll learn in the classroom to some experience outside the classroom, which um, I think is gonna you know, help greatly in how do you get that critical thinking piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, um, I think the piece you're talking about, um, to gain some of those skills, to learn how to reflect on that experience you're doing outside the classroom, we now have a virtual program called Professional Ready, where professional students, ready, professional ready. Like <laughs> um, where students can, um, you know, virtually, so if they're distance students, can go through a series of modules, a series of um, programs to learn interview skills, to learn resume skills, um, to learn how to write an appropriate email, a thank you letter, um, those types of things, so that they're highlighting those skills that they're hopefully getting outside of the classroom in their yeah, internships. I think we, we're highlighting on for people at home yeah. to see some of what it looks like and some mm -hmm. of what some of the subject matters are uh, mm -hmm. and we have a we can't show this video because we couldn't get it to play but we have one on social media that we're gonna show one of your modules okay. so be smart on social media let's take a look at that As a student, you need to Google yourself every week to see what pops up. That's first off. I mean, it could be a simple picture of some situation that you're in that a friend snaps a picture and tags you to it, right? Or I've seen examples of where someone tweeted something they wish they hadn't tweeted. Okay, we're, we're, we're having some technical problems with the, with the video. But uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come back again. All right. It, it, Google yourself every week. <laughs> See what they're saying about you. So how did you come up with the topics? How did you, how did, where did you begin to build this? Well, we began, the team at the Career Center um, kind of came together to talk about which modules would be most helpful for students. Um, which ones also relate most to the career readiness competencies that um, the Career Center follows. Um, NACE, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, is what we really look to to kind of guide our work in terms of teaching students about career readiness um, and those competencies. And also listening to employers when we have employers um, recruit at the Career Center and hearing what's important to you all and so what we should share with our students. Um, and so the program has three different badges that students can earn. There's the Professional Ready and then Professional Ready Garnet and Professional Ready Gold. Um, and so students can earn these digital 
badges and the first badge covers some of the essentials that our team thought was most critical um, for students' career management. So a module on career readiness, explaining what are soft skills, uh, resume ready, interview ready, professional communication, um, diversity and inclusion in the workforce, and putting that together in a career portfolio. Cool. Well, the video has been fixed, so we're going to watch it because I want people at home to get a sense of the kind of, of uh, videos that are on the site. So. As a student, you need to Google yourself every week to see what pops up. That's first off. I mean, it could be a simple picture of some situation that you're in that a friend snaps a picture and tags you to it, right? Or I've seen examples of where someone tweeted something they wish they hadn't tweeted, and it's out there forever. Looking at someone online, I want to make sure that it's an accurate reflection that anything that I'm seeing, they would be comfortable putting in front of their mother, too. Some organizations will search your social media pages. Some organizations have social media policies that may prohibit you from joining their organization because of your social media presence. One of the first things I had to do when I started working for Aramark uh, was go on to Facebook and untag myself from every inappropriate picture that I thought was up there uh, because your social media presence, essentially, it becomes your brand now. An employer usually looks for, when they Google your name, the volume of information that is out there, the purity of that information, the diversity of that information, and then also the validation of that information, that you really are representing the authentic you. Your Facebook profile will pop up, your LinkedIn profile will pop up, so right away they're gonna say, okay, this person represents what they say they represent on that social media network. When in doubt, make sure that your pages, your profiles are professional, they're appropriate, and they're representative of what you would wanna to say to an employer. But you're making a digital imprint, it's recorded forever, and you've gotta be careful. Well, thank you. Um, I'm glad it worked. Uh, so Kyle and Emily, is this something that will only be for FSU students? Will you share it with any of our other institutions? Like what, what's the status yeah, with this? So right now we're piloting it to our current students and alumni um, with hopes of opening that up um, to the community. FSU does serve community members, um, but right now we are just launching it to our students to see how it works. Mm -hmm. So it's like what yeah. what works, what they like, what exactly. you might tweak. And do you encourage like starting freshman year to get involved with this? I mean, it seems like the sooner we can be talking to students about career pipelines, yep. the better yep. it is. Sooner the better. So um, as I mentioned, we have resources really for any student at any point in their in their career. So somebody who has no idea what they want to major in, what kind of career they're you know thinking about, up through um, helping students um, gain experiential learning opportunities, network with professionals in their field, and then even towards um, those who are thinking about going to grad school, how do you write about um, you know your specialty in your graduate area? And then how do you talk about that when you're finishing your graduate degree, maybe you're going for an academic teaching position, um, some non-academic route. Um, so really we feel like every student, um, mm -hmm. no matter what your situation, what, what point in your FSU career you're at, um, professional ready can help mm -hmm. you out. That's great. That's well, we do have a question from someone has submitted a question from, I assume Facebook. And I think here's our question. They wanna know what are the challenges and what information should a student seek before a telephone interview? First question, a favorite first question like you do. Um, tell us a little bit about our company and how you will fit into that world. Mm -hmm. So you're immediately qualifying the candidate to see if they took even five minutes. Because some people, the way they approach a job search, you know, right. quantity versus quality, just right. apply to every job out there that's remotely relevant or even not relevant. But the, depending on where that answer goes, it really sets the tone for the rest of the interview. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love, I've heard some amazing answers and I've heard some terrible ones right. that just avoid, um, <laughs> y'all develop apps? Like, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, it's pretty bad if they can't, I mean, information is so readily available now, it's, it's pretty sad if you have Because that done can go from homework. a phone interview to an in-person interview. Right instantly right. like I'm glad you took the time to do some research why don't you come on by next week and meet the team right. versus have a nice day 
Yeah. And also, I would say in, in the academic world, um, I've had cases where I generally tell students to, you know, as they're thinking about graduate school, you know, look up who the faculty at that university it comprises and what research are they doing. And if you find one that's of interest, then why don't you reach out to that faculty member? And these things do help because you're not going into an interview cold. You already know something. You may have been introduced before the process gets started. Um, I've actually had a student um, where a faculty member out of graduate school said, all you have to do is get accepted and I'll, I'll take you the whole way. And she's now working with one of the national laboratories. Um, and she came from a very small school, but she reached out, connected with a professor at University of South Florida in this case, and they were very impressed with her. So oftentimes it just takes them to be a little bit proactive, reach out and do the homework like you said, and find out what's available. I'd like to add something. Sorry, and I would say something really common sense, right? You're doing a telephone interview, make sure you're in a place where there's a good reception. Mm -hmm. It's quiet. Mute your phone so you can hear the answer. Unmute when you're responding. But some of those, again, when we talk about soft skills, right, yes. it starts. And I would say to anyone listening, and especially students, um, the interview starts really way before the first day of the interview. Right. The interview starts with maybe the secretary, the office manager that called you to schedule it right. or sent you an email. Did you respond? I always feel that you learn so much about a candidate while you're setting up the interview. Mm -hmm. Their ability to be flexible, um, kind, um, smile through the phone. So to the, to the question via Facebook, you know, one of those things that's find a quiet space, uh, make sure you have good reception and make sure that your excitement and you're smiling through that phone so they can feel you as well. And don't take, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, and don't, don't do the telephone interview at your current job. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good that's one. A, yeah. And an, another <laughs> tip, because you, uh, everything you said was perfect, um, but if you are in a place where there is a distraction, make that clearly known. Mm -hmm. I had a candidate um, that I contacted and I said, what in the world is that noise? And he said, well, I'm shrimping. <laughs> and I, you're shrimping. He's like, yes, I'm at St. Teresa. I'm 20 feet off the shoreline. I was like, well, maybe we should talk another time. And he said, well, no, I'm looking for a job. That's why I answered the phone out of the ocean. <laughs> so he was able to counter that. Um, well, and that it's situation. amusing and memorable. <laughs> yeah. Thank and, you, you know, for letting me good share. life balance, right? Yeah. <laughs> But you know, we also talk about, you know, people judge you from various distances and, and I always say they judge you from 12 yards, 12 feet and 12 inches. And, and I say that to say, you know, if you're in a case where you're actually visiting an office mm -hmm. to do an interview, you're being interviewed as soon as you walk in. And I used to work with a firm when I lived in Atlanta and oftentimes um, the manager or whoever was doing the interviewing would come back out to the receptionist mm -hmm. and say, what do you think? Because you don't know that you're being interviewed right. a little oh, yeah. bit. Our, believe me, our yeah. receptionist, yeah. she'll let yeah. it. Yeah. She, we and had so a it's, candidate. It's a thumbs up or thumbs down. We had a candidate show up there. who left their dog in the car. What? And that was a no-no. And Michelle told everyone, she left her dog in the car. We can't hire her. I mean, it's, and. <laughs> it's, so, yeah. There you go. I mean, it, it, she might have been a terrific candidate, but that was poor judgment. So. Yeah. You're setting up, sometimes we'll use email to set up telephone interviews, how you respond back in that email. Is it professional? Is it, you know, did you just quickly, did you use text speak? That also, right from the get-go, can set the tone of the, the telephone interview. Sometimes we're like, oh, we set it up, so we'll have to do it. Maybe it's, it's probably gonna be five minutes now because of that communication right. style. Marie, did you wanna add something? I'd like to add, I think the most important thing for us is that if we give you directions, if we tell you call between three and five, and you don't listen to that and you call a different time and you think you might want to get an advantage and call before everybody else, it doesn't bode well. You want to make sure you follow the directions. You want to make sure that you are articulate on that phone and you inflect your voice, that there's inflection there, that you are excited and that you're prepared for the interview. You have that resume in front of you and you're ready to answer the questions and you want to be honest because we've already done some background. We want to make sure that you're the right candidate and you are a good fit. So. Just tell us what really happened. Right. Yeah. Well, that, I think I think you all answered that question very well, and whoever asked it got some good information. 
I want to I want to shift the conversation a little bit because we have a new governor, uh, and he is really putting a focus on developing talent, a talent pipeline in the state of Florida, and he's looking at it from all sides of the equation, from career and tech education to our universities and our community colleges. So, um, Madeline, I know this has been something you've been working on. So, what what do you see coming as the direction from the state on this subject? So, um, Governor DeSantis, um, early um, as when he was elected, signed an executive order uh, to make Florida number one in talent. Um, states that really prepare a strong talent pipeline will have a strong economy and job growth success in the future. Right now, we almost have a full employment uh, type of environment, yeah. means that many of our employers need bodies. And so when you hear what they need, they just need people. But that may not be the case five years out, 10 years out, and by 2030. So the states that are focused on talent are going to be able to compete for those headquarters, for those companies looking to grow and so the governor has uh, not only signed the executive order but the legislature signed uh, legislate House Bill 7071 saying that 60 percent of Floridians will hold that post-secondary credential um, asking the Department of Education uh, to look at all career technical education and make sure that it's aligning to the high demand high job growth areas our colleges and universities also aligning academic programs just this week we saw once again Florida leading the nation and with many of our universities um, you know especially FSU 18 uh, to number 18 say it again 18 right but and Florida <laughs> ranks number one in higher education but the governor is very much focused and the legislature is also invested for business partners 10 million dollars that businesses can come and partner with uh, whether it's our tech centers or colleges to develop apprenticeship programs and a big focus on those work-based learning programs um, like pre-apprentice apprenticeship and registered apprenticeships so I think Florida um, as a state we're doing so many things uh, to make sure that we line up our human capital from you know the the new Florida standards in our in our early learning and kindergarten readiness to third grade reading level to what's happening with our colleges and universities. And I think the important part, folks like Career Source doing so much of incumbent trainer training, you know, and making sure that those employees today in a job have the skills to keep that job tomorrow. Absolutely. I, I, it seems like we're all trying to row in the same direction, yes. that there's a real concerted effort from our highest universities to our tech centers to be thinking holistically on, on that talent pipeline, which I think for business people, that's music to your ears. Oh, it's, it's tremendous. Uh, we work very closely with Lively, um, and they're the technical school here, and they keep telling me that there's not enough students to keep up with the demands that, whether it's in the construction industry, whether it's healthcare, IT, it's, it's there's a shortage everywhere of good qualified of uh, um, you know people and do you see that as employers do you find it like it's, pretty tight out there to find people tight it's really tough we're all competing for the same people we're we're really competing for the same pool where maybe seven eight years ago you had people lining up at your door now you're lining up at their door trying to get in front of students and trying to meet people at coffee shops and giving your business card out wherever you can there is a, a, a labor shortage that the last person we hired uh, had three offers on the table. <laughs> and so I had to go back to my sales roots <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, to see Florida excelling. I love the points that you made. Um, you know, it's all about synergy. I use the hashtag Team Tallahassee a lot uh, on social media. But, uh, you know, we have a classroom out at uh, TCC and having that commonality and that synergy together allows the, the flow of communication and uh, getting people into jobs ultimately. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, you make a really good point about going to them. Mm -hmm. um, we've, you know, we launched last year our digital rails program where we're taking it out to middle school, high school, 
students to expose them program. to those technology pathways. Um, so many of them, you know, when you're think when you're thinking about a career, you just know those top five careers, but have no idea in technology, all of the um, areas, and in healthcare, mm -hmm. just not nursing. But when you think about just uh, technicians and and the technical skills, and so we're we're also doing that in terms of making sure that we're out in the community, uh, getting the, to individuals and to students so they can see those pathways. Well, and I always love how President Murdaugh talks about on-ramps and off-ramps. You know, life doesn't have to be this fixed thing. It's like we go along and as we need more education, we can go on that ramp and then we come back onto the road and then down the road, maybe we need more education. Right. If we can build that mindset that life is about learning throughout life, lifelong learning, then I think we can address some of these shortages and, and expand our talent pool. Like pull people back in to school for additional certifications or credentials so that they can be uh, have more meaningful work in their lives. I think about veterans yeah. and what we're doing with um, the Veteran Center, you know, the more Veteran Center on campus, how do we make sure that we integrate our veterans when they come back, that we look at what experiences they have and be able to apply credit. Um, we're developing entrepreneurship programs because so many of them want to start their business. So how do we help um, create that at our college and then in the community so our veterans also feel that they have a place when they come back uh, to integrate back into our communities. Do you do m many veterans at FSU come uh, into the Career Center? Absolutely. So uh, we actually have um, first Friday of every month we have a student veterans uh, lunch at the Career Center hosted in our, in our building in which we invite um, local employers or employers from all over actually uh, to come and network not to do a sort of a formal presentation, but just to come and have lunch, talk about what's going on at their business. Um, we've recruited the FBI to come, um, the Jacksonville office, um, Northwestern Mutual has come, um, and just a way to, um, yeah, for veterans to sort of connect, see what opportunities are out there for them, um, see what companies are valuing hiring veterans. Yeah. Great. And one of our hardest chargers is a veteran, and uh, we talked about phone interviews, we talked about in-person interviews, but since we're talking about technology, uh, don't forget about Skype type interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, so this gentleman was in California, just got out of the service, and we did a Skype interview. And you have to get over the awkwardness from both perspectives, <laughs> but um, <coughs> we extended him a job, and that was four years ago, and it's a great story. But you have to have your A game with that Skype mm -hmm, interview right. too, because yes. I could tell he was like, had a closet behind him, but he was trying to make it look very professional. And, uh, he pulled it off. Nice work, Mike. <laughs> Pay for creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, we have one last video I'd like to show because you, we touched on this a little earlier about the importance of internships. And there's the Tallahassee Future Leaders Academy program. I'm, I'm sure many of you know about it. And we have had for the past several years, a student come through here. So this is a story about Sydney, who worked with us this summer, and she talks a little bit about what she learned here. So we're gonna watch this and then we can talk about it. My name is Sydney Mines, and I am a TFLA intern working with WFSU. My favorite experience was getting to go and work with the kids. One week we went to Chattahoochee and worked with the kids at an elementary school and I absolutely loved it. I got to work at one of the stations and then the Osquad camp I thought was really fun and the kids really loved it. So when Sydney got on board, we were all happy and she was really quiet. <laughs> um, but honestly, ever since uh, she started to spend more time with us, she's gotten more and more uh, open and entertaining, and she's got a great sense of humor, which we have really enjoyed having around. So for the Oscar camp, I had to make boxes for all the children, and it would be like this special little cubby that they can put their belongings in every day. Most of the kids enjoyed it and loved their boxes, and we're so excited to show it to their parents, so I felt really, really great about it. I am horrible at waking up, so I have to set an alarm. And I think that me knowing that I have a job to go to every morning helps me wake up, get ready, and actually be able to go out. 
I don't usually conversate with people around me if I don't really have to, but this, I'm more inclined to communicate with people and ask them questions <laughs> and get to know people better. I've learned a lot about teamwork because they involve me with everything that goes on, meetings or just casual talk or anything that they need. And I really enjoy that. I really appreciate that. American Graduate Getting to Work is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. So I love that because, you you know, here's a young girl, never worked in a professional space before, and she, she learned a lot and just went from being the quiet, shy girl to be very uh, part of the team by the end. Well, unfortunately, we are really running out of time, and I want to give each of you uh, a little bit of time short time to kind of have any final thoughts about the subject and and uh, the conversation we've had and I'll, I'll start with you Kyle at the end. I, I was happy that the conversation moved in the direction of the importance of internships, experiential learning. I feel like that's really where you learn the soft skills um, and so I was happy that took up a big you know chunk of our time in addition to how to phone interview things like that were also very important mm -hmm. um, but I was happy to see that um, that, that was uh, a key part of the conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Um, I think a lot of the soft skills that we develop um, are often through the experiences that we have. And so the more experience that we can help our students gain, the more prepared um, they will be. Okay. Yeah. Briefly, because we're running out of time. Blake. To be able to put people in a position to ex uh, excel in their career is such an honor and uh, a responsibility I take very seriously. And I look forward to working with you all here in our great city and state. Thank you for having us today. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to piggyback on Blake. I think it's very important for business leaders um, in Tallahassee to work very closely with all of our schools, um, whether it's you know middle school, high school on up, to, to give these kids the soft skills that they need. OK. We have four minutes, okay. so we can breathe a little. All right. I just want to say how great I think it is that we came together as a result of a career pathway meeting where you have all of the educational partners, you have the business, and you have career source. We work together to ensure that we're helping each other out, we're partnering. We're talking about what are the soft skills? How can we help each other? How can we collaborate? And this is how it starts. So thank you for being here today, and I've really enjoyed working with my partners on this. Thank you, guys. I would say, you know, talent is universal, but not opportunity. And so um, we have, you know, amazing collaboration here in our community to provide opportunity, whether it's TCC to FSU, TCC to FAMU, TCC to work, the relationship that we have with Kaiser, mm -hmm. and that we just keep in mind that, you know, talent is universal, but just how do we create those opportunities for everyone in our community to have the uh, chance to follow a pathway into a career and have those hard and soft skills and, and be ready for the future. I love that. I love that thought about opportunity. It's really important to keep in mind. Yeah. Byron? Um, I think that um, all of us here um, have really a, a, a penchant for helping to develop talent, and that's where we should be, um, whether we're in business or in academia. Um, but I think working with young people and helping to develop them, um, letting them understand that life is not just linear all the time that it's it's all over the place sometimes and sometimes it just takes us to engage with them or prompt them a bit they have plenty of talent i've found but sometimes how they are able to process and communicate and see life from a holistic point of view um, is difficult for them so i think our job is to help them see that and let them soar from there well, thank you. Thank you for all that you've contributed to this conversation and for what you do in the community. I, we are lucky in Tallahassee. I think the Career Council Pathways, mm -hmm. the Career Pathways Council, I'll get it right. That's a great organization because it brings everyone together to be thinking holistically of how to address some of these and so that we're all rowing our boats in the same direction. So and if I could say a quick thanks to uh, FAMU and TCC, our two founders went to FAMU and TCC respectively. All right. My wife went to Florida State and I went to the other university that came in at number seven on that list we were talking uh, about earlier, yeah. but we can't talk, we about, can't talk about them right now, Blake. <laughs> but thank you all for everything you do for our community. So, oh, that's so nice of you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right. Well, thank you all. And thanks for joining us tonight. And it was a great discussion. I learned a lot. So I want to, um, we're going to wrap this up tonight. We're at the end. So we're going to thank you, our audience, for joining us tonight for tonight's American Graduate What's Next program about soft skills. You can also learn more about WFSU's American Graduate Initiative from our website, gradstowork.wfsu.org. You can also watch archives of our previous What's Next panels. We've had many discussions on there, so while you're there, take a look. I'd like to thank all of our guests for taking part in today's discussion. I'm Kim Kelling. For everyone at WFSU Public Media and American Graduate, have a great night. Thank you. So thank you all. So anyway, let's just very... American Graduate Getting to Work is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.